Hello and welcome back to Cardinal Science for this first video looking at the Edexcel IGCSE Biology 2017 specification. I'm starting at this point in the specification because this is the order in which I'm currently teaching it. Hopefully I'll get around to the rest of the specification soon so you can revise using that. Okay, so we'll be looking at the structure and functions in living organisms part of the specification and among that we'll be looking at transport. So the specification points we'll be looking at are 2.51 and 2.52. Understand why simple unicellular organisms can rely on diffusion for movement of substances in and out of the cell. And understand the need for a transport system in multicellular organisms. To aid our understanding of this, we're also going to do a brief recap of specification point 2.15 with regard to diffusion. To understand the content in this video, we really need to be sure about how diffusion works. So here's a brief recap. So diffusion is the movement of a substance from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. We call that going down a concentration gradient. Now this process occurs because of the random movement of particles in liquids and gases. They move randomly, though the net movement of them is from high concentration to low concentration. And they'll do this until they're evenly spaced. Now the rate at which diffusion happens is very important for this topic. So we'll have a quick look at the factors that affect it. So firstly, and most importantly to this, is the surface area to volume ratio. So the larger the surface area to volume ratio, i.e. the more surface there is per volume for an organism, the faster diffusion can happen through that surface. Secondly, the moistness of the surface, the temperature, okay, and you want to think about collision theory from chemistry to consider why that might be the case, and the distance. So it's very intuitive, the further away something is, or the longer something has to travel, the longer it takes for something to diffuse. So a short distance would be quick diffusion, a long distance would be slow diffusion. So like I said, the surface area to volume ratio is the important factor here, and it's something that people really struggle to get their head around. So I'll try to explain. Imagine we've got two organisms, and they're both cubes. We've got the small cube on the right, and the larger cube on the left. And the larger cube, let's say, has the dimensions three centimeters by three centimeters by three centimeters, and the small cube is one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. Now, we want to figure out what the surface area to volume ratio is for each of these, and therefore figure out which one will carry out faster diffusion. So, the cube on the left, its surface area. So it's the area of all of the faces added together, okay, all of the surfaces. So that's one of them I just shaded in. So each face is three by three centimeters, and there are six of them because it's a cube. So we've got nine times six, which is of course 54. So that's 54 centimeters squared, it's an area. Now the volume is three centimeters by three centimeters by three centimeters, which is of course three times three being nine, nine times three gives us 27 centimeters cubed. And so our surface area to volume ratio is going to be 54 divided by 27, which is two. Now for the smaller cube, our surface area is going to be one times one, this is the area of one face, multiplied by six for all the faces on the cube. That's of course six centimeters squared. Our volume is going to be one times one times one, which is of course one. So our surface area to volume ratio is going to be six divided by one, which is six. Now, as you can see, the larger something is, the smaller the ratio. And the larger the ratio, the faster the diffusion. Now, thankfully, you don't actually have to do these calculations in your exams. But if you're struggling to understand surface area to volume ratio, I think this will help. So pause the video, have a go at this one. See if you can figure out the surface area to volume ratio for both of these cubes and decide which one will have faster diffusion. Okay, let's keep going then. So for the five by five by five cube, we're doing five by five for the area of one face, multiply it by six, which is going to be 25 times 6, which is 150. Then our volume is going to be 5 times 5 times 5, 
which equals 25 times 5, which is 125. And this is, of course, centimeters squared, and this is, of course, centimeters cubed. So our surface area to volume ratio is going to be 150 divided by 125, which is 1.2. Now, moving to our other cube, we've got 2 times 2 times 2 for the volume. I'm doing this in a funny order, it seems, which is, of course, 8 centimeters cubed. And our surface area is going to be 2 times 2 for the area of one face times by 6, because there are 6 faces, which is 4 times 6, which is 24 centimeters squared. Our surface area to volume ratio is going to be 24 divided by 8, which equals 3. So as you can see, our smaller cube has a larger surface area to volume ratio, therefore diffusion happens quicker through it. So now we've done our recap, we can get into the body of this. Why can unicellular organisms rely on diffusion alone? Why don't they need a transport system? Well, so they're made of only one cell and they're very, very, very small, which means they have a very, very large surface area to volume ratio. And as we just said, the larger the surface area to volume ratio, the faster diffusion can happen. Because it can happen so quickly, they can actually diffuse all of the oxygen and nutrients that they need straight through their membrane as opposed to needing to have a transport system to take it around their body like larger organisms would need. We'll go into this in a bit later. Okay, so a chance to pause the video again now, have a go at these questions and just check that you've absorbed what you need to absorb so far. Name four things that affect the rate of diffusion. What is a unicellular organism? Give an example. How does a high surface area to volume ratio increase the rate of diffusion? Okay, so we'll go through the answers. Four things that affect the rate of diffusion. Moistness, distance, temperature, and more crucially, surface area to volume ratio. A unicellular organism is an organism of only one cell. An example would be a bacterium. Three, how does a high surface area to volume ratio increase the rate of diffusion? Having a larger surface area means there's a larger surface through which diffusion can happen therefore increasing the rate. Okay, now 2.52, transport systems. What is a transport system? So a transport system is a structure within an organism that's designed to allow the organism to move things around its body, okay? So we have, for example, the circulatory system in humans, okay? Blood carries oxygen, in the haemoglobin inside the red blood cells, carries carbon dioxide in the blood plasma and nutrients as well in the blood plasma. And it carries this all around our bodies. But why can't we just use diffusion like unicellular organisms do? Why can't we just absorb everything we need through our skin? So to give some context to this, I'd like to think about the possibility of giant spiders. On Earth, it's currently impossible, thankfully. Now this is because they absorb their oxygen for respiration via diffusion through holes in their exoskeleton called spiracles. Now the larger they get, the smaller their surface area to volume ratio gets. Eventually, if they were too large, this would get so low that diffusion alone wouldn't be enough to provide all the oxygen all of their body cells need. Some of the cells would die without the oxygen. To be any larger than they currently are, they would need to develop a transport system like humans have in terms of the circulatory system to take oxygen to the cells that wouldn't be reached by diffusion alone. So for multicellular animals who have a surface area to volume ratio that's too low for diffusion alone to be sufficient, we need to have a transport system. Otherwise, many of our body cells would never get any oxygen and we would die. Okay, so there's another short knowledge check for you here. Pause the video now and have a go. Okay, so for number one, the unicellular are made of one cell, multicellular are two cells or more. Diffusion is the movement of particles from high concentration to low concentration. And a transport system is a system used to transport substances around an organism. So how do we examine this content? Well, for 2.15, the brief recap that we did, you might be asked to do, define diffusion might be asked to explain how a given factor affects the rate, so moistness, distance, temperature, surface area to volume ratio, or predict the outcome of an experiment. 
it will really depend on what the experiment is but if you have a good understanding of how diffusion works you'll have no problem now with regard to transport systems specifically often 2.51 and 2.52 are examined within the same question so you could get a question like this elephants have a circulatory system to transport oxygen around their bodies why don't bacteria need a similar system this could be a three to four mark question of course elephants have a large body and a very small surface area to volume ratio bacteria are very very small and have a large surface area to volume ratio therefore diffusion can happen quicker in the bacteria in fact so much quicker that the bacteria are able to get all of their oxygen needs just by diffusion whereas the diffusion rate through the elephant's skin is so slow that they need a circulatory system thank you for watching cardinal science this has been an edxl igcc biology 2017 video hopefully you found it useful if you have please leave a like and subscribe or leave a comment below and let me know if you have any questions or comments thank you